All right, babies, it's that time again. Look at me, I'm all uh, snowy white. It's, uh, I'm on my way to Bethlehem, Connecticut. Yeah, baby, that's where I work, which is uh, 57 miles away from my apartment. <laughs> yeah, honey. Uh, and it's 30 degrees up there, so I'm ready for it. And the car is trying to heat up. I feel the heat coming on right now. So we're just going to leave it as is. Uh, um, and, all right. The sun is coming up. All right, baby. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you. I'm so sick of Genesis, I didn't even crack it open yesterday. I think I kind of peeked in to see, like, when am I going to get out of this Noah nonsense? And it's not for a couple chapters. So there's, there's a couple of things we can glean that would be useful in, you know, the last two chapters, whatever it is. It's like chapter five, six, and seven, something like that. But we'll get to that when, I, when I'm ready for it. I was not ready for it last night. I was like, no. Instead, I was crying, yes. Why was I crying? I was crying because I was feeling the weight of my foolishness in um, doing things my own way and not really seeking God with my whole heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. So that was good and then I kind of uh, after that I jumped on the piano and came up with a fresh song to show my appreciation for who Jesus is in my life and he always likes that so it's always good to make him happy and when I say happy you know it's kind of a, a weak term but I like to be a source of joy for my bridegroom. Yeah, baby. Uh, there's nothing more important. I really don't care about anything else. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. But what's interesting about that is um, because my focus is so much on being a joy for Jesus, that I, the result is I do care about everything. So when I say I don't care about anything, what I'm really saying is I care about everything. All right, so this is perfect. This is what we're, we're gonna talk about today. And this is what I was expecting was gonna happen because God is just, amazing that way. I wanted you to see me alive, happy, energetic, just getting out of bed, driving an hour to work. Finances are a mess. It's as if I'm not even going to work. It's like I have no savings. I can only just pay my bills. It's, it's, it's that bad. Uh, but I'm happy. I'm joyful. I'm energetic. I'm, I have meaning, power, anointing, creativity in my life. Just like when I was 19 years old and I was making minimum wage and putting groceries in my refrigerator for my brothers and sisters because my dad was too distraught and unable somehow to make any money. So yeah, those were the days where I was just investing so much in my brothers and sisters benefit that I was high as a frickin kite for 13 months straight, like with almost no, uh, no laps for 13 months <laughs> and I could have gone forever but I was just like uh, if my dad's not going to do anything then he's not going to be motivated 
to do anything as long as I'm putting groceries in the refrigerator. So I just decided not to. So my point is, when you follow God and you devote yourself to him and you make yourself a living sacrifice for the benefit of others so that the fullness of his beauty, his love, his power, his creativity, his wisdom, his patience, his compassion can come alive in you, then there's nothing else to live for. You have everything you need. That's what I mean by that's all I care about. But when I, and I say I don't care about anything else. So there's the paradox, and that's what I wanted to get to, is that one of the big issues I found with running into people who are fundamentalists or who are really, you know, even political people, right? Who are too extreme uh, on one side or the other. They have no uh, capacity for understanding the power of a paradox because they're too invested in their way of thinking that anything different than their way of thinking is anathema or, or is, you know, considered evil or a curse. So that's what it's always been for me and that's what I'm trying to show you is that in all of my life, all, all of my inspiration has always been in the context of understanding, appreciating, and living as a paradox. So a paradox, in case you don't understand what that is, it's basically you have one, one thing that appears to be uh, life-affirming, and then you have something else that is just as life-affirming, but is even more life-affirming when it's joined with the what appears to be its opposite. And so if you, if you look at the Bible, for instance, and even some Buddhist teachings, uh, or really anything in life, when you see, when you come across something that's really uh, sort of puzzling, that's like, well, this is true, and also its opposite is true. And then you try to think of, well, how can that be? Isn't that contradictory? Yeah, it's contradictory if you're in a mindset that is in shackles because you've aligned yourself with one way of thinking. For example, there are people who worship the Bible instead of worshiping the living God. They believe so much that the Bible is God's word that they force themselves to believe ridiculous things like a merciful God is going to torture millions, billions of people for eternity because they didn't align themselves sufficiently with Jesus when they were on the planet. <laughs> so they're incapable of understanding the beauty of a paradox because they are the exact reason and example of the need for paradox. Because if you don't understand that things, two things can peacefully coexist and actually need each other to have the most magnetic and powerful synthesis when the two are embraced together, then you're just going to miss the whole, the whole point of the presence of God. And it'll just like, it goes on and on and on and on and on. I'll be talking about this, you know, till the day I die because it's where life is. For instance, Jesus is both God and man. He's not just divine. He's not just human. He's both. Well, how can that be? Live your life. Open yourself up to him. And he'll show you exactly how that can be. Yeah, baby. We'll see you next time. <laughs>